kitchen exhibit. Woo! <laughs> I'm getting sushi for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got. Yeah, I got the email. I was gonna talk to you about it because I said I got accepted into it. I you got accepted, and you won the grand prize. And your image is gonna be in newspapers and all over the place. You'll have posters. Yay! It's great. It's really good. You and Christian both got in. Um, it was difficult for the printing to understand what I needed. Um, I had to rearrange everything and actually treat each section because that's how I had to sew it. I had to, for their, their purposes, treat it as individual books. Mm -hmm. So they actually have a computer program that can make a book for you. So I had to make eight books <laughs> for them. So I had to like say like, okay, page one, blank, page two, this, page three needs this, page mm -hmm. four, blank, you know, because I wanted each left hand side to be blank mm -hmm. and then each right hand side to be, um, have an image on it. But since you fold it over and so on the inside, some pages, some images had to be here and then other images had to be here so that when it gets folded over, they're on top of each other. So it was definitely a lot of planning because I had to figure out throughout the whole book where I wanted certain pictures and I wanted to mix everybody up and have, you know, different images next to each other. Mm -hmm. I didn't want like the same kind of people next to each you other. You wanted to show that it's yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The portraits in the series, We Are America, represent the connection between the ideals and realities of family and community. When I started this project initially, I wanted to take family photos that demonstrate how diverse and intermingled our modern America is. During the process, I was moved to exhibit how each individual is a part of the American family. America thrives on dissimilarity and promises freedom for all, and yet we cling to the symbolic and societal pressures of what it is to be an American. The locations of these portraits are as much about the story as the people themselves, bringing a small sense of where and how they live. While looking at my subjects, I chose to focus on simple, straightforward portraits. I also asked the participants not to smile in an attempt to drop the mask so that many of us feel obligated to wear. The slide photographs, rep represented here as lifts, embrace the link between past and present. They are modern images of vintage American symbolism. The transfer process uses an older method of photography that originally utilized Polaroid. Polaroid was one of the first photographic methods that allowed the American family to be documented, paving the way for the instant gratification of a photograph that we are now accustomed to with digital photography. What is old is new and what is new is old. As Americans, our past and present seem very different. I believe our lives have a faster pace than in the past. However, our core values are still the same. What unites us as people, although we are different, is that we all have hopes, dreams, goals, challenges, and afflictions alike. Every triumph or tragedy molds us into who we are as individuals and as a country. Through dedication to this project, I was reassured America has always been and still is about making a better life for ourselves and a better future for our children. The task of representing this idea of unity within diversity did not come without its challenges. I had to step out of my comfort zone and deal with insecurities about my stance in society. I was able to reflect on my own life, growing up watching my parents live and work to support their family. The series gave me the opportunity to see through the struggles of my subjects, whether it be racial, spiritual, or societal. This is the start of what will certainly be a lifelong project. Uh -huh. I wish that <coughs> the student exhibit was right now. I mean, we have to yeah, find another place. To show. Well, we'll find another design. place to show it over the summer, for sure. God, um, it's so pretty. Oh my god. I feel like we need to make a press release just for the book. Like, just for that book. Hey, by the way, everybody, this book's coming out. Look out. Like. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. All right. Okay. So this is my e-photo book that I made. Um, my first photographic series was documenting a graffiti writer in both work and life. While driving around the interstate, he started pointing things out to me that I would have never noticed. See over there, under that bridge? I've got a tag over there. It was a location I've driven past several times, but I've never noticed. Ever since that day, I've become much more observant, and I look at every little detail in every city I visit. I look at the rarely seen parts of buildings, and I notice the patterns and designs that are so often repeated, or walk by and ignored in the bustle of a city life. Breaking down buildings to shapes, lines, and textures. This photo book is a collection of the best of these patterns, designs, and landscapes of urban settings. The pictures contained in this book are a result of three months of hard work. 
To me, buildings themselves aren't that attractive. It's the repetitive structure and the attention to detail and dedication to craft. It's mechanical. Uh, this book is dedicated to my dad and the ever wonderful Michelle. The, uh, my stepmom Michelle actually paid for the book and it's going to end up being a gift for my dad since he funded about half the book anyways. He paid for the book to get printed and um, half the pictures that take place in Atlanta he paid for me to go up there. So I figure it's going to be a really nice gift for him. He collects photo books from his travels anyway. Belize 2013. Uh, Belize has a varied landscape that is home to a diverse and curious culture, history, economy, and architecture. This series of photographs is inspired by a mission trip that I feel blessed to have attended during April 2013. The mission, to construct a church building and to encourage the nourishment of souls. In addition to talking to people about Jesus, I was able to participate in a church-funded feeding program for children. I have come to dearly love the children and people in the Valley of Peace, Belize. And um, I had a real hard time titling these, so I went back just to basics. That's what it should be. It doesn't have to be this big thing. So um, some people just do untitled. You can even title them untitled. Uh, you have to write untitled. So oh yeah, I, I just I guess I just never knew how to title anything. So I went through some some photo books and, and learned a little bit about it. So I had to do it. So. Okay. I did. Um, throughout history, humans have utilized dogs to aid in journeys of travel, warfare, and survival. Today, among other functions, many canines still fulfill these traditional rugged duties. In this series, I photographed the dogs of the Iditarod, the last great race on Earth. This race lasts for a thousand miles through the rough train of Alaska, which is appropriately, appropriately referred to as the final frontier. A sled dog is more than just your ordinary family dog, and this journey exposes how essential to man's survival they were and are, still are, in some places. Or, in some places still are. Um, through these photographs, I capture the bypass identities of these dogs and the methods of communication they attempt to convey. I was captivated by the complex expressions of the dogs' faces as well as their body language. I decided to concentrate on these qualities to convey their emotions in the photographs. It is too often that we as humans overlook their identities as dogs and instead give them our own identities based on human emotion and perspective. That's great. Sure. I know you worked really hard on that. You have no idea how much I hate these things. <laughs> Any images that particularly work together? I like the dogs running, because I didn't know they wore little boots like that. Oh yeah, the boots. So I thought, I thought that was pretty cool. And then the one where the dog is, it's just one dog and it's curled up, uh -huh. and it's like looking at you. It's simple. Yeah. It's, I like it's strong and simple on its end. It doesn't need a lot. With the white. 